So, let's take a look. Obviously, you can get up to 11,000 steel. Steel is good. Steel is good to ships. We like ships. There you go. Get your steel. Now, there are restrictions here. A team, uh, aircraft carriers and subs are not allowed, so yay, that's good. Uh, no more than two battleships per team, three mercenaries per division. I really like the mercenary system, by the way. I'm glad that uh, Wargaming is at that. Um, yes, by now, Duckman, you're supposed to know the maps by name. You cannot have two identical ships in the lineup. Okay, so you can have two, but no more than two. I like how they repeat themselves here. Aircraft carriers are not allowed in the season. And carriers will come in the future, though. New restrictions may be added. Restric existing restrictions may be changed. And all of those will be announced in dev blog. They have not announced any so far because we're just finishing our first week of clan battles. Here's all the things that you can get from playing through... Clan battles, I always recommend you just get in and you play a bunch of games. You'll get some steel, you'll get some flags and stuff like that. Um, you know, whatever. And then you also get uh, stuff in clan treasury, depending on your place in global ranking. There you go. Okay, and then you get, you get Rental Gearing, Rental Hindenburg, Rental Montana this time around. Interesting choices. Potato, it sounded like you were going to say something, but... Um, stop I mean, short. It's basically, the, it's basically the same as last season, except just a different map pool this time. There's not, no real difference. Yeah. Um, let, me drop, let me drop this for a second, because Cthulhu is asking me, how do you... Uh, where is it? Yeah. He says, how do you find a clan so bad they would consider me as a merc? All you gotta do is go up to here into divisions and wait about five minutes for the game to respond. Click yourself into looking for division and then put what kind of ships you've got available uh, that you'd like to bring. This is a really old message that I had when I was trying to finish up my typhoon wins. Um, but you can say, I'm here for clan battle Merking, um, I have, you know, blank ship, blank ship, blank ship, uh, you know, I prefer blank class, you know, etc, etc, etc. And then you just put that in there. Now you're looking for division. If somebody else looks for you, um, they can hover over you and see, um, you know, information about what it is that you're trying to, to do. Um... So that's, that's something that you could consider doing when you've got uh, clan battles going on. Uh, that might get you access to a clan and work for them. I had a lot of fun murking before uh, for random clans. So it's definitely worth uh, thinking about that. There you go, Cthulhu. Now, I will say this, Cthulhu. It also helps whatever you type into here. It also helps to have that in a notepad, like just up so that you can copy paste it into a division window. So a lot of people, they'll invite you to a division and they won't even know much about you, like what you're looking for or anything. So then if you uh, copy and paste that into a division, you can say, hello, I'm here to play clan battles with you. I'm good at these kinds of ships. I have these ships available, ready to go, inspect up. What can I, what can I play for you? Something, something like that uh, makes it very easy uh, for a division to grab you and immediately think of where they need to put you. So I would definitely do that um, if you're if you're looking to do some mercenary action. You make a lot of really good friends that way, frankly. Um, you'll get invited to a bunch of different discords, you'll hang out with them, um, and I often find it's a, it's a much more relaxed way of playing clan battles. Convince co-op, is that, that a co-op main like me would be a good fit? There you go. And there is a mercenary section in the WoWs Discord. That is correct. Um, we'll do for clan battles in co-op. Um, so, how's about we talk about tier 10 ship options? I don't have a tier list in place, but I'm very happy to talk through my picks for battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. And chat, you're more than welcome to share what you guys think as well. Um, with the various ships. 
So seven versus seven tier seven ships. You cannot have more than two of a particular ship. No battle, uh, sorry, uh, no submarines, no aircraft carriers. So we'll skip those portions. All right, battleship wise, what I would take now, mind you, I will put this out there and say, I have not played clan battles this season yet. Okay. So ships that I think are solid ships that you can easily put in, uh, no matter what Ohio, uh, because of the secondaries, because of the guns, because of the quick reloading heal, good maneuverability, decent armor. Ohio is, in my opinion, a main stage in clan battles. Um, and Kremlin is the other main mainstay we typically see in clan battles. Ridiculous armor, good guns, quick tur turrets. Um, you can just sit there and, and do whatever. So... To me, those two are immediately what I would consider S tier. You're going to probably see a lot of those in clan battles. Remember, I haven't played it, but I'm sure many of you have seen that already. Ships that Colombo. are... Go ahead, what? Colombo also works uh, just because of the sheer shell volume and actually has armor and the fact that it does have the fuel smoke. So mm. when it comes time to push, you can utilize that uh, in conjunction with something like oh, i don't know moskva that generally true. tends to work as well true but i'm trying to talk about like the easiest easiest battleships to play um and it's ohio and Kremlin. yes to me i look at colombo as a or b tier if i were to give it a rating right because you're right in certain situations it's very powerful but those situations have to line up just right and you the captain have to be able to find that situation and abuse that situation to make it work so i think colombo is a decent pick if you're a good colombo player but if you're not you may kind of struggle a little bit with that a lot of teams are running schleif and gk combo and going to the same uh cap yeah double battleship pushes those are the really annoying ones i've seen price and gk as well um the problem yep. is it's very easy to counter since you just rotate the battleship uh, you simply have your uh, uh, torpedo destroyer just rotate towards yep. the um, two battleships and torpedo them. That's yep. generally what happens. Puckhead, if you're out there, thank you for the message. I really appreciate and respect uh, your decision, but uh, seriously, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, I, and I agree with you. So I, I don't I don't see um, Kerr first and person being as effective in in clan battles I mean, you can make it work but i think kremlin ohio is better Kerr first i would place at uh maybe a or b tier as well um i don't have a prusin so i can't share that the in my opinion the wild card is going to be the schlieffen because of its ridiculous ability to charge in and uh, make plays it's not it's not one of those ships that you're going to put out on the flank and expect it to do what you um you know what a normal battleship is going to do this is the kind of ship that goes into a flank that maybe is falling apart and just single-handedly brings it look some <laughs> i need to get out of looking for diff uh, single-handedly um breaks you know breaks that flank wide open like that's how i look at it you know what i'm saying um so that's that's what i would do with it Right, exactly. It brings its own destroyers tied up alongside of it. So I look at the Schlieffen as an A tier. I wouldn't consider it to be S tier. I would consider it to be A tier. Very strong ship in clan battles. Definitely worth picking up. Um, Conqueror and Thunderer, both of which I would probably say are B tier. You're just sitting there farming enemy battleships. Thunderer maybe a little bit less so. Um, another A tier of ship I think is the Brigand because of its really good... Uh, speed and maneuverability and it's got the main battery reload booster as well i think this is a really good a tier uh, battleship and i would expect to see a decent number of those battleships out there in clan battles vermont not so much trident okay we'll do trident um what about montana, Yama oh, montana i'm getting there Montana, I would probably say, is either maybe A or B tier as well, um, because it's got the maneuverability, good guns, good armor. But if I'm playing Montana, I'd rather have an Ohio. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, frankly speaking, Montana works like uh, Kent, for example. We run a um, push kite flank strategy. So we have an Ohio on a pushing flank, 
mm -hmm. and then we have a Montana on like a fighting slash stalling flank. And the Montana, I mean, I play the Montana for Kent, and I generally run the artillery plotting room for that extra bit of range that allows me to take those very, you know, oftentimes be crucial uh, cross map shots that can uh, sort of turn or influence how a game plays or mm -hmm. turns out. I think it. I think it ultimately comes down to uh, your capabilities as a commander, and you know. Yeah, this also you comes can't have shock calling as well. Yak Diego, you can't have two Ohio. I thought you could. I thought you're limited to two of each ship. You're limited to one of each ship, actually. Is Max. it one? It's one. So basically, you have to take. Uh, oh yeah. Like, okay, I read that wrong. But. Quite frankly, you're not going to want to take two Ohio's anyways, um, because the idea of, especially in a in a tight knit uh, battle like this, right, uh, where it's seven on seven, you uh, you want to pick ships that will complement each other well. Uh, you don't typically want to go for generalist ships, and that's that's the only thing that kind of you know goes against Montana, so to speak. But um, again, it, you could definitely make it work. Um, Shikishima. Somebody in chat was mentioning that, I think is also another good choice. Um, I would put the Shikishima at A tier and the Yamato at B tier, um, simply because the Shikishima, I think, um, does does the job of Yamato better than the Yamato does. Um, so that's how I would do that. Slava, I would put at C tier because I just don't, I don't think that there's a place for it in clan battles. I don't think it's that useful. Uh, Incomparable is another wild card. Like the Burgonia, you would be playing this as a flanking ship, um, you know, trying to get to a part of the map that the enemy uh, had, doesn't expect you to be in, and then you only shell with your uh, with your gigantic guns on their broadside with AP. So A or B, depending on situation. So I guess maybe B tier then. What does that leave? Republic. Um, Overmatch's cruisers. I personally would rather have a Brigand, though. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, I just... Nothing happened. I just hit to face full torpedoes. But All right. um, Incomparable does work in... Um, like, if you manage to get down a flank, that's where it shines. However, yep. the problem is... Coordination usually dictates that, um, you know, you have to sort of push all together. But the problem is, the problem is you do have a lot of open maps like uh, North and Tridents, where if you want to push down a flank, you kind of have to push mm -hmm. down the 9-10 line on North. And that's usually very obvious. So what a team, what I've seen a team usually do is put a torpedo destroyer or a stalling cruiser like a Napoli down there. And that usually just... Yep. Um, that usually completely negates something like a uh, incomparable or Schlieffen going down there. Because so, not only do you have to push into that guy, it's like you're basically opening up a crossfire for your enemy team to just hammer home on him. Right. And again, that, that goes back to player skill. I mean, you know, S tier ships, I think, are ships that are just kind of easier to play no matter what. And then, you know, A tier require a little bit of skill to make it work, maybe a lot. Um, and then, you know, B tier, C tier are kind of like, why would you take this when there are better choices, in my opinion? And again, this is, this is my opinion, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt if you want. Let's move on to cruisers. All right, top well, tier picks. Well, before you start cruisers, yes. time come for raids and things. For stream raiders, I know, it's got five seconds. I'm just going to run it off stream, um, so we can keep talking about the, uh, about the, um, cruisers here so here we go so let's talk about cruisers you're gonna hear people getting killed in the background it's all good uh top tier picks for cruisers moskva ridiculous absolutely ridiculous good armor yeah. bow tanks everything good ap good he all that good stuff so i would say moskva is s tier um petropavlovsk i don't like the petropavlovsk but i mean i know it's a ridiculous ship anyways so that I think I, you guys can all agree is also S tier. Des Moines, also going to be S tier. I mean, a lot of these cruisers, not, not much to say about them, right? Everybody knows what these ships are. Moscow over Stalingrad, Lucifer Spider, yes. Mainly because Stalingrad now 
um, it, it doesn't benefit from uh, fire reduction skills anymore, so it does have uh, does have the ability to, to light in four places, and it's a super cruiser, which means it burns longer. So I think Moskva definitely benefits more um, in, in terms of taking less uh, fire damage compared to a Stalingrad. The other um, thing is that Stalingrad has much larger 25 millimeter sections that are very easy to punch through. So anything right. accurate, reasonably accurate, like a Montana, will constantly deal chunks of like 15, 16 thousand damage through that. So that's, that's right. generally something else why um, Stalingrad sort of fallen out of favor. Instead, you have like Petro. And its its uh, radar was nerfed recently, wasn't it? Yeah, twenty second radar now. So. Yep. Now um, just to... there's no carriers in these cl this season. Stalingrad, in my opinion, comes back and like can be used a little bit more, but it just still isn't as good. True. Keep in mind, though, that the Stalingrad does not have the ability to take hydroacoustic search, and since there's no carriers, you don't need to worry about your defensive fire as much. Um, so that kind of yep. makes it a little bit less important. You don't take a Stalingrad over a Petro for the simple fact of you can't build fire prevention like you used to. Right. So Stalingrad just burns. Right. So you're going to... It gets focused fire, you know, and it can't hold up like the Petro does. So by default, you're going to take a Mosfa, you're going to take a Petropavlovsk, and if there's room in the comp, maybe you'll take a Stalingrad. But most of the time, you're probably not going to have room in the comp. Um, by the way, we're on a boss fight for uh, Stream Raiders. Remember, guys, at the highest number of kills in Stream Raiders boss fights gets you a special prize, and we have a special prize available to you guys. We have Stream Raiders Retro War Beast skins. I got two of them to give away, so you want to put your best units in. Um, okay, so that takes care of what I would consider to be S-tier cruisers. Um, there are other cruisers that are very close to S-tier, but a lot of it depends on how it's played and how you use them, okay? Stalingrad, we already talked about, I would rate as an A-tier because of that. The other ones that I would rate as A-tier are Venezia, because there's, there's a lot of knowledge of the game required to do well with the Venezia. Same thing with the Nevsky. Both of these are kiting cruisers, and you have to really know what you're doing. Henri is also a possibility for an A-tier cruiser. Um, Goliath is fantastic for a kiting cruiser um, that that you know um, you can you can take a lot of damage and dish out a lot of it and just be a pain in the butt. Hindenburg uh, sadly has has lost some of that ability thanks to Goliath's existence, thanks to Venezia's existence. So I would probably put Hindenburg as B tier, um, simply because of the fact that anything it does, other ships seem to be able to do better. Sadly, Napoli. I've been skirting the issue of the Napoli. Napoli, I would say, would be an A tier because of the fact that it's got fantastic armor. Um, you can Yolo charge a Yamato with a Napoli and win. And I'm speaking from experience in clan battles. It's hilarious when you do it. Um, but I don't make her S tier because like the Venezia, it requires a lot of knowledge of the game, a lot of skill to be able to pull her off, um, uh, you know, quite well. Some people were mentioning the Golden Lion or the, the Golden Liu. Uh, I don't like this ship personally. Uh, maybe you can make it work for you. Its AP is really good. Um, but I just, I just don't like her. If I'm going to put her someplace and hold down an area, I'd rather be in a Moskva doing that, or a, uh, an, or Des Moines. Now, Danger Noodle, you've been saying Smolensk several times in chat, and I gotta say, I disagree with you. I don't think it's an S or an A tier. I think this is a B or maybe even a C tier ship. The problem that I have with the Smolensk, I mean, yeah, it's got the troll armor layout and all that kind of stuff. But the problem that I have with the Smolensk in clan battle situations is it's one of those ships that you are dependent on the enemy team to push into you to be able to be very effective, right? It's one of those, it's kind of like a World War One style machine gunner nest. You, you, you sit there, you pop smoke, you dare the enemy to come after you. The problem is, as you go up in skill of, of opponents, uh, they will charge your Smolensk less and less and less. And what that means is, you are more forced to, um, you know, basically be aggressive, push in with the Smolensk, and play it in a way that you don't want to play it. 
Um, like I said, it can work, but I just, I just don't see it being um, that effective. Um, a, a similar ships that can work but probably just are not effective would be Austin. I just, I just can't see you playing Austin in this. Austin is dependent on another ship to work with you, and in clan battles, generally speaking, you want ships that are better off uh, independent. You know, um, and Austin can't do that really. Um, Plymouth is a, a, able to be on its own and do its own thing, but I just, I, I this ship just gets whacked way too easily in my opinion. Uh, so, I don't like that. Gibraltar, same deal. Gibraltar is really good killing destroyers with its AP. But that's about it. Salem, if I'm taking a Salem, I I, I don't know. It's got that short-range T-Rex radar. I'd much rather take uh, Des Moines with that. Um, Puerto Rico is a meme, but you can take it. Um, you can have fun with it. But, there, again, there's other cruisers that are better. So... B tier, A tier for Puerto Rico. Zhao, test ship Zhao. Um, other things do better than this ship, so nah. I'd rather play a Yoshino if I'm going to take a Zhao. It's got 20 kilometer torpedoes instead of the Zhao's. Um, what does the Zhao have? 16? 12. 12. Uh, it's been a while since I've played the Zhao, as you can tell. Um, I'd rather take a Yoshino because of the longer range torpedoes. Wooster? Uh, but that said, Yoshino's not top tier. Uh, Wooster, not so good either. I, I would say, um, you know, Wooster's probably a, a B tier as well. Once again, dependent on islands and teammates to spot for you. Now, Kadu, you said Minnow earlier. Minotaur, I want to talk about briefly. Smoke Minotaur is C, is absolutely C tier. There's no reason to take a Smoke Minotaur in this game. Okay? It Maybe there's a couple, but for the most part... You don't take a Minotaur in clan battles, or ranked battles for that matter, um, so that you can smoke up in pew pew enemy battleships, or maybe cruisers or destroyers that your teammates are spotting for you. You take Manitar, okay? You put radar on it. It's very hard to see. It's very hard to be detected. When it gets detected, it's got the ability to pop the radar. You can see whatever destroyer is detecting you, and then you can just gun it down. That's the whole point of, of Radar Minotaur. Very hard to do. So as a result, uh, you know, I would say it's probably A tier because it requires a lot of, of good players' uh, skill to be able to bring it out to its fullest. And that leaves us with Colbert. Like the Smolensk and most of the other spammy, spammy boats, I don't see a use for it in clan battles. I would say it's C tier. All right, I think I just covered all the cruisers. I'm trying to do it briefly for you guys. Uh, did I miss anything? Alright, so let's now talk about destroyers. Um, destroyers... Um, generally speaking, again, you want to be able to be independent. You want to be able to detect and destroy enemy destroyers. All that good stuff, right? But if all you have is one... Well, yeah, of course, Cthulhu, right. Yes, S tier is Ohio and Kremlin, yes. So here's the, here's the thing. Uh, let's take a look now. Let's talk about destroyers. Um, Smallland, absolutely top pick, right? It's got, it's got the ability to stealth radar. Uh, the guns are pretty good. It's got nice torpedoes. It's got a heal. Um, so I think Smallland is kind of easy mode for destroyers. Uh, in this game mode, the other one I think is easy mode is Ragnar. Similar, it's got the ability to uh, stealth radar. Its guns are a little bit bigger and punchier. It's got an armor layout that makes it uh, much more resistant to enemy destroyers uh, because of the 25mm side plating. So that comes in very handy. So I look at, I look at Ragnar and Smallland as definitely my S tier picks uh, for destroyer. And beyond that, you could do a gearing or summers. Um, I would call those maybe more A tier because you got the smoke screen, you got the ability to, to you know, uh, long range torpedo out things. Another good A tier choice would be a daring because it can one v one another another destroyer. Ah, radar, you Yang. I'm so glad you brought that up. 
Yu Yang, like Minotaur, can bring radar or can bring smoke. I, in my opinion, smoke uh, Yu Yang is viable if it's going to work with uh, spamming cruisers that you know out there. You can do that. Um, but Radar Yu Yang does have the ability to um, stealth radar or whatever. The only thing that I don't like about about Radar Yu Yang is it's got uh, deep water torpedoes, which aren't going to work against enemy destroyers. The DPM is okay, okay. It's not the greatest. Um, and, and generally speaking, I feel like a Radar Yu Yang is just going to get uh, blapped and, and blown out to smithereens. So I don't think Yu Yang is going to be that good for this mode. I would say Ragnar Smallland are, are still my top pick, tier picks there. Z52. The, the nice thing about Z52 is it can it can lock down a cap. The, the not so nice thing about a Z52 is if it's locking down a cap, chances are a 12 kilometer radar cruiser is going to be able to just hit that I win button and detect it. So unfortunately, I don't think the Z52 is as effective as, you know, it could be or should be. Uh, as a result, I'd probably rate it at, at a B rank, um, B tier. Forrest Sherman, no, just no. I don't, I don't see a use for Forrest Sherman. The torpedo arcs are just really wonky, to, you know, just out there. So your torps are not effective. Your guns are not. Uh, the guns are the bread and butter of the ship, but the problem is the concealment. It is too high concealment, um, which makes it too easy to spot and detect. It does have hydro. It does have smoke, but I, I just don't. I don't see it. Um, Kleber, Kleber, I'm gonna put as A tier. I'm gonna put uh, Kleber with A tier simply because it does have the ability to uh, YOLO charge in and you know do ridiculous, stupid things that way. Um, but generally speaking, I don't think it's gonna be that effective. Um, Against against a well coordinated team that knows what they're what they're up against. Hold on a sec. Stevie just finished his his foods. So, you know, I I, I guess you could get away with Cliff Bear, um, but in the process of doing that, you know, uh, your team isn't going to be as dependent on you in a in a typical destroyer role. Um, so there's that to keep in mind. There he is. I'll put the camera on so you guys can all see Stevie in his glory. Um, others, let's see here. I would say, you guys, oh, you guys also asked about the Marceau. Marceau is another one of those, um, that, you know, is really difficult to play. Um, if you've got a player who's really good at a Marceau, yes, you can make it work. But I would also make that an A tier ship. Um, if it had a heal, then that would make it better. Uh, but it doesn't. Speaking of ships that have heals, the Kabarask, I just don't see it. I'd rather play a Kleber if I'm going to play a, a Kabarask. So there's that. Vampire 2 with its crawling smoke is great at crawling into caps and crawling into enemy radar and then dying. So I would say C rank for Vampire 2. Druid might be fun as hell, but it doesn't bring a lot of utility for the entire team. So I'd probably also put that in as a B tier. Wolf's Red Paws, goodbye. I saw you earlier. Sorry. I don't see the Kaba. Everybody sees the Kaba. Like I said, Ariak, I haven't played uh, this particular season of Ranked yet. I just wanted to um, give you guys what I thought. Um, what else do we have left now? Holland. Holland's got good uh, torpedoes. It's got a heal. I could see people playing Holland. Probably make it A tier. Elbing, B, B tier probably. It's just, again, dependent on the enemy team. Oh, you're commenting on its concealment. Yeah. Okay. Grozovoy, Jack of all trades, Master of none. It's an okay ship, but I would probably say it's an A or a B tier as well. It just doesn't do enough of the good stuff. Nustrashimi, unfortunately, is tier 9, so you cannot take it into clan battles. Um, Shimakaze. I've seen people do really good things with Shimakaze in clan battles, so yes, you could you could take it. I would put it at, as well at A tier. Um, torpedoes and concealment, good stuff. And that just leaves Hayate. What the game? I, 
I don't care about Hayate personally. Uh, I would I would rank it as a B tier. I would do it as a B tier. And gearing I'd already mentioned um, with the summers, it's got the American smoke and it's got long range torpedoes that you can spam out. So gearing is always a competitive ship in that right in that mind eye. But for the most part, um, the problem with gearing is it, it doesn't have a heel, it doesn't have the radar. There, there's things that it's kind of, I guess you could say, missing. Um, that would be nice to have. So I would look at it that way. Um, so let's round let's round this up and talk about comps. And this is why this is one of the reasons why I think Climb Battles is quite stale at this point. What about the Italian Destroyer? Not available yet, so I can't comment on it, Gaelic. But in battleships. Let's just let's just write this out real quick here. So in Yay. battleships, you're going to have. Can I can I do this? Can I do a window capture? Let me see. Hold on. I haven't done this before, but oh, I can. Maybe. So in in battleships. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. But in battleships, you're going to have at, at S tier. You're going to have an Ohio, and you're going to have a Kremlin, for the most part. Delny, I don't have Cthulhu, so I'm not sure what to say about that. Um, but I, I, it could work, but I just don't see it being that fantastic, personally. So, you've got Ohio, you've got Kremlin at S tier for battleships, right? Um, and then for uh, cruisers, you've got Moskva, Petro. You're probably going to see a lot of people taking a Napoli simply because of what it brings. I told you it was an A tier, so I'll put that at the bottom of the list, but you've got Des Moines, right? Uh, and what's the maximum number of ships you can bring? Seven. So what does that leave you? S tier destroyer, Smallland or Ragnar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And, and that's, that's it, right? Like that's, that's what you're gonna have. You move that over for you guys. At the top tier leagues, this is what you're seeing people play. Obviously, they have to drop one ship, so they'll drop a destroyer or they'll drop a cruiser. One of the two. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's those are the, the, that's the main comp that you're going to see, and then beyond that, I mean there's there's others like I had mentioned, but. But in any case, I, I mean, if you're looking for for my picks, that's that's what you're going to take. OK. All right. I think it might be time to do our map talk.